Hi, everybody. Why don't you take your uh, mute button off and um, we can introduce ourselves. This might, I don't know how many total participants there were, so th this, it might be a, a fairly small group this evening. Uh, but let's, let's wait a couple more minutes to see if other people are coming. It looks like we have five plus yourself. Okay, total? Yeah, and I, I can tell you right now that two of us are probably gonna have to jump in about 10 minutes because we have our own neighborhood meeting tonight too. Oh so no, really? Is ahead of time. <laughs> okay, um, fair enough. Um, let me um, share my screen. Maybe we could loop through both questions quickly and then for those that can stick around, we can go back and, and, and do it a little bit more slowly. Does that make sense? So you're going to see yourselves for a minute. Don't panic. Um, so uh, I'm also happy to answer general questions about uh, that. Again, my name is Tim Love. I'm a principal at UTL. I work with Maggie and the rest of our team and have been very involved with this project. So I think the first question, uh, I don't know why I'm hearing an echo. It's kind of hard. Okay, I think the, 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 the first question, um, I'd like some feedback on from you, um, has to do, uh, we, one of our focus areas as urban planners is the changing nature of industrial districts. Um, and the fact that I industry is very different than it was, you know, even 10, 15 years ago. And I, 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 I wonder if I bring up a slide like this or, some of the the images of um, what boutique and light manufacturing looks like today. Um, if you know of any businesses like this in Norwalk or have any experiences with this, or if this was interesting new information for you, or did you know in a way that this is an economic trend that um, has been happening in a couple of years? I mean, any any general thoughts about about this whole topic of what industrial is? Um, uh, from anybody in the group. It's even an issue that in some municipalities is even a decision or discussions afoot to get rid of the word industrial altogether and either call uses manufacturing uses or distribution uses because those tend to be the actual categories yeah. that define um, industrial today. Jennifer? Um, I want to jump Sure. In front of anybody, but I don't go for it. Talking. Um, my, my name is Jennifer, and um, I could I can see um, exactly like more of the the concept of like a manufacturing and distribution. Um, I um, can see like a lot of modern makers. You know, the concept of a maker. Um, that modern definition of it is like, you know, the, the, obviously the smaller areas where one has can make furniture, can do like CAD design where you don't necessarily need to have 10 plus employees, um, where um, offices can, you know, can actually create a lot with the right tools and, um, and and distribute a lot. So like I, I when I was envisioning things, I, I live sort of in the um, in the South Norwalk area. And um, we do have a distribution manufacturing distribution area right down on Woodward Avenue. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's a great space for it's a great space for makers. So that's sort of where where I was coming from. I also live very close to the to the dump <laughs> and to the, you know, where there's a lot of heavy industry and a lot of heavy um, trucking for recycling, et cetera. So that's, um, I don't think that's gonna change anytime soon because I know that cities need those. Yeah, I mean, I, do, do you think simplifying, I mean, you're probably, I don't know if anyone uh, in this group is a, is a zoning policy expert, but does it make sense to you to simplify the zoning and being be very clear about these three kinds of industrial uses. Does that make sense to you, Jennifer? I am sort of a zoning dork. Um, oh, okay. Well, but I'll, but I'll... but it's just it's just only from at my um, my past that I've had to deal with it. Um, but that said, it. Um, I mean, if you want to rename it, sure. 
you know, it might go, it might be a pill that's easier to swallow. Yeah, I think, I think that what, what we've discussed with the city is that it's, it's clear from an economic development standpoint. In other words, when the city's talking to potential businesses that might, you know, lease space or build a building here to have these simpler buckets that are actually aligned with land use policy, um, uh, just makes recruitment and and kind of marketing a little bit easier. And it and 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 right now the 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 industrial uses are across eight different um, zoning districts that don't even have that in the name. So that's a little bit the logic too. Does anybody else want to um, build on that or have any any feelings about that? Um, my name is Jody Proct. I actually live off of Woodward Avenue. Um, so I'm really familiar with what um, Jennifer was just talking about. Um, and, you know, I, it would, I think it would help. I think a lot of the people that are on this call are aware of, you know, a lot of these things. I think what happens is the people that aren't on the call and that aren't really involved, you know, they don't know. So yes, making, making those distinguishes, or, you know, would be helpful to mm -hmm. the general public when, when this comes out, you know, in the newspaper or wherever it comes out so people can understand it. Um, you know, I know the concern in my neighborhood is that, you know, it, you know, with Norwalk, it could be a, a slippery slope, you know, you say, okay, boutique manufacturing, but what does that really mean, you know, and, um, and, and then what does that lead into? And could this be interpreted as interpreted as boutique manufacturing when it's not? And it might be light industry or even heavy industry. And, right. you know, we end up with, you know, these, you know, trucks going up and down, um, you know, residential neighborhoods. Um, and, you know, and that's a concern for, for everybody. So to, to, to identify and to define these industries and make them very clear so people understand what they mean. So when something is moves into the neighborhood, they right. can say, okay, this is this yeah. was within the boundaries. That's um, really a good comment, like no gray area because you don't want, um, and that, that applies to city staff too, I think. You'd want yeah. the boundaries to be very clear. So you're not opening the barn door for you know, right. incompatible uses because boutique manufacturing really, first of all, has to be compatible with other uses. That's by de definition why you would allow them in a mixed use district. So I think that's a, I, I, I think that th that's something I'll even stress when we get back to the general group. I think that's a really, really important point. Um, Joshua, or I can't see the, the other person's name here. Um, or Hi. Um... Yeah. No, I, I just very quickly. Um, so my name is Josh Wilson. I actually sit on the zoning commission. So I, I'm here mostly like to observe and because um, I know that we, the commission weighs in a little later in the process and I don't want to take away anyone else's opportunity to speak when, you know, I have an opportunity a, a little later in the process. So I'm just here to participate as a citizen here. So, Did anything, anything Maggie say spook you? <laughs> no. Any preview of the of, of reactions to come? No, I mean obviously the Norton Place application has gotten a lot of coverage, and um, you know that way that moved its way through the zoning you know commission process, um, and you know that's an interesting item, and we'll have to see what you know happens there. But I think that hopefully whatever is there, you know. Um, you know, it's something that where the future developer, you know, whomever that is, you know, works with the, works with the neighbors. Yeah. So we'll have to see what happens. It's a complicated site because the only access is, site. the only access is right in the, through the middle of a residential neighborhood. And um, yeah, that of course complicates it as well as highway access. Yeah. So, you Lack know, of. that was, what? Lack of highway access. Lack of highway yeah, access. Absolutely. Well, yeah, absolutely. That, that's, that's what I meant. Yeah. Um, that it's difficult. So, yep. Yeah, uh, Jeff or John, any any comments about uh, re really reclassifying industrial and? I'd say I mean I don't know, I don't know enough about the existing classification, but that looks pretty simple the way you did it. And from my perspective, the 
you just look at other cities that have been expanding and building out. They figured out how to attract boutique manufacturing in a way that uh, brings better other businesses around in terms of retail and other things that improve the community. So this looks pretty simple to me. Yeah, but I, I, I want to point back to Jody's excellent comment about um, being very clear about the rules are for each because they each come with a amount of potential compatibility with other uses. And so heavy industry is incompatible with anything. Light industry with some kind of office space, but boutique manufacturing has to, can't have big truck access and things like that. One of the concerns that I've heard from in every, everywhere in Norwalk is, um, you know, buildings are built these huge buildings are built, whether they're residential or commercial, and they are then, they can't be filled. Mm -hmm. um, and we have an extensive amount of construction going on here in Norwalk with apartment buildings and condos and things like that. And, you know, and then we have a mall that will probably be the last mall ever built in the United States. <laughs> and, um, you know, and why are you getting a mall? How, how is that possible? <laughs> you got it. No, got it. Got it. Um, I mean, I'm in the, that industry, and 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 the you know, it, it blew my mind that they were considering building a mall when you know retailers are just closing their doors. And um, so you know, the concern really is um, is that to build all of these buildings, and you know. Up front, they look beautiful, and the idea behind them is great. And I, you know, I think you know when you look at the boutique manufacturing, you know, it's such a, it's very sexy, you know. But then, you know, what happens down the road, or you know, in a pandemic, or you know, something happens, and all of a sudden, it's an empty shell of a building, and it's not being maintained, and you know. Uh, so you know, there is a concern behind that. You know, rents go up. And rents are constantly going up. And so what's nice about boutique manufacturing is it's it's it, <clears throat> it tends to be small, you know, between two thousand and eight thousand square feet. That's the sweet spot for boutique manufacturing. And that's the ceiling heights and the size is is really the same as retail. And so uh, our thinking as we do planning studies in different cities is that, maybe boutique manufacturing can move in where retail was once viable and it's not because of e-commerce. And so it, it's, it, to, to me, it's a little bit of a, of, of a new tool in the toolkit because um, in, in a mixed use city where you want different kinds of action on the ground floor and you want a, a you know, you want, you don't want be just bedroom communities in some parts of cities. You want people there working in the day too. It's a nice thing to kind of come as a trend. It's a nice thing that can kind of come in behind a lot of the retail that isn't viable anymore. Um, and so I, I think the 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 problem with with new buildings is probably bigger commercial buildings, but um, and maybe light industry a little bit. But those would probably be purpose built anyway by um, a. a, a a developer with a tenant, um, which is less true often with office buildings, or at least ha it has been in the past. But I, I think it's a, it's a good concern. And I, um, uh, Sabrina, who works for the Economic Development Department, fields inquiries from these kinds of businesses, and she said there's just no place to put them in Norwalk. You know, we have so. um, off of um, I, I can never remember like the Wilson Avenue that mm -hmm. area. Um, there was something built probably, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. And it was a great space. It was like, it was. Um, there was, yeah. there was like a farmer's market and a beer garden. And mm -hmm. it was, it was, and it still is, it's beautiful. And it's just not being used. Yeah. And it's empty. Yeah. And, and it's unfortunate because it is in a great location. Um, I mean, you, you know, it's a great spot right on the water and it's just, it's really pretty. Um, and I don't know if they just, you know, never pushed it or funded it or what happened or uh -huh. why it failed. But, you know, now it's like, um, like I feel like it's being used as storage. Units. What's the name of the project? I'll ask Steve and Sabrina about it. Um, 
I don't know. Does anybody? Oh, hold on. I'll remember it. Um, it was right next to, this is what you need to remember. It was right next to Grasso Construction. Okay. It was in the back. It it housed um, a farmer's market. Yeah, a beer garden. It was it was a beautiful site. I think the uh, maybe location was tough to grab a lot of different people to come down to it. Um, but think... there was like, a, there was like a tag sale. It was sort of broken out like, in the inside this industrial space, um, there were there were different compartments for different sellers to sell different types of things. I see. And, um, it was a it was a beautiful. I mean, in my opinion, in, and um, and I'm sorry, I don't I don't see your name again. Jody. Oh, Tim. Oh, Jody. Oh, 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 Jody. Yeah, and in Jody in 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 Jody's observation as well. It was it was amazing. Who doesn't want beer near them? Um, but like, but like it was, um, it was, it was something that it could have been great. Right. You know, one of the issues with older industrial buildings is that most new, most of the light industrial kinds of businesses that are in the middle of this slide, I don't know if you're seeing this or not, um, need ceiling heights that are higher than a lot of the older industrial spaces. You know, they need, you know, 20, 20 foot clear, 25 foot clear. And a lot of that older Butler building stuff is lower. And so um, that, that's one of the issues with the inquiries that come to the city too. Um, uh, let me, I, we should probably move to our other question. Um, John or Nick, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, uh, any comments, John, about this question? He might be lurking. This is Nick. I just joined, so I, I didn't hear the, what the original question was. Uh, we're we're we, we're talking about the um, the way we've recategorized industrial businesses into into um, uh, three clear categories that have to do with the relative compat compatibility of those kinds of industrial businesses with other uses. In other words, heavy industry not compatible with anything, light industrial compatible with commercial boutique manufacturing compatible with residential and with commercial and to have very clear guidelines and boundaries about those those uses um, to make the zoning map simpler which 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 has advantages then that the city can can has an easier job of kind of marketing different buildings properties and areas of the city which are very confusing now because industrial uses run across eight different uh, zoning, uh, 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 zoning areas, uh, very few of which even have manufacturing or an industrial in the title. So that's that, that's what we're talking about now. But I think we should move on to um, uh, to get your feedback on the waterfront, if that's okay in the time that we have left. Um, okay. Uh, uh, and that's because um, uh, the when we when we dove into the waterfront, we realized it's a much more complex issue than just an issue about industrial uses because it has to do with public access. It has to do with um, you know marine dependent businesses and 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 boat owners and marinas and it 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 um, and so uh, what the city decided to do was to carve out uh, a slightly different process for us to look at at the waterfront. Uh, the next couple of months. So um, I just wanted to get the feedback of the people in the group um, about what, as we start to look at what we should think about when, when thinking about the Norwalk River and the waterfront. Any any top items for, for the people on, on the call here? So are you, are you talking about undeveloped? No, areas? just are, it, like- or What's already been developed? Like- Yeah, what, what's already been developed, it's, um, uh, if I show you this map, you know, the, the Norwalk waterfront is incredibly complex, you know, mm -hmm. because the river takes a bend, it's got um, industrial uses on it, it's got the dump, it's got the aquarium, uh, there's a lot of marinas, um, and like any advice before we tackle this? It's an incredible resource. Yeah. It's a beautiful, incredible resource, and it will draw a lot. I think it draws a lot of people to the area. And okay. yeah, I, I, you know, personally, um, 
personally, I would I would love for it to remain. You know, I I I don't I hate to see more development on it. Like I love the idea that there are, you know, uh, marinas and there's you know some you know uh, residential area and there's the aquarium, um, and the park. Um, you know, I, it, it you know we have this you know beautiful waterfront that we should be allowed to get to, you know, when there's so much industry, if there's you know more industry built. It basically, you know, locks us out of that. Um, yeah, this is a map that we made, which shows we think all of the waterfront access points, the green little squiggly lines on here. And um, yeah, I mean, who wants to walk through the dump? Right. Really. Right. You know? <laughs> right. I mean, it really smells over there, too. It yeah. smells like what you yeah. think it would smell like being a water treatment place. Yeah, I mean, Oyster Shell <laughs> Park is beautiful and that's, you know, fairly right. new. That right. used to be the dump. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and, um, but, you know, I, I don't know, you know, yes, it's, it is, they have made it somewhat accessible. Um, I just would hate for that to go away or become less. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, you know, so, I don't know. I just, I, you know, I feel but, like no, that's, know, that's waterfront green space is, is, is ideal, and that, but that's not, you know, that's not making anyone any money, right? So that's, no, that's that's good. What what about other? Do other people see issues that you want to flag for me and our team? I mean, things we should know, things the city didn't get right. Um, uh, you know, most most urban waterfronts are are the result of a whole series of actions and decisions by private industry. And, you know, the, the whole Norwalk waterfront was an industrial waterfront, like every city in the 19th and early 20th century. Yeah. It's because of, you know, barge access and, you know, rivers with things you dumped things into. And, and so uh, you see, any industrial businesses along waterfronts today are, are kind of legacy businesses from earlier decisions. Um, uh, John, you haven't had a, a chance to pipe in. Do you want to, uh, you any comments about the waterfront? Uh, we can't hear you for some reason. Oh, I'm sorry. No, yeah. can, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. All right, yeah. No, I think what was also said with regard to waterfront uh, use, uh, but we need to delineate what is, you know, for water usage, what do you mean? It's not water dependent. It's water dependent usage mm. is, is critical. Yep. Um, uh, just being able to uh, view the waterfront is, is, is not enough. I think what needs to be done, at least in this particular area, if it's going to be an industrial use, is um, uh, we have boat clubs or you might have um, boat rental slips, uh, 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 kayak rentals, uh, ski, uh, well, that's going to be tough as far as up the river is concerned. But uh, uh, again, the industry or the business or the boutique has got to be certainly water dependent. Right. Uh, there's this, there was discussion earlier with regard to, um, uh, I think there's a fellow by the name of Bob Kunkel who is an interest in bringing in produce from uh, across, you know, from Long Island Sound, uh, from Long Island uh, to using Norwalk as a marine highway. We're designated as a marine highway. I'm on the, oh, interesting. I'm on, the Harvard, I'm on the Harvard Commission. Oh, okay. So, okay. so water, water, uh, Norwalk is is on the map for being a, a, a marine highway where uh, uh, boating can bring in, uh, for example, produce. As a matter of fact, he's considering doing bringing produce, but I can see one of the spots up in the upper area, the up in the uh, Wall Street area, serving as a depot for bringing in fresh produce by boat, rather than bringing in trucks into that area for for produce. You bring uh, is a very convenient to bringing uh, bringing produce in by boat into that area right there. That's uh, pretty that's cool, cool, really. You know, to, using, to, yeah, well, that, well, that's well, pie in the sky thinking, but uh, uh, but again, I'd it's like a nice image though. I like to see I like to see the waterfront being used for more of that that purpose rather than the trucking in uh, you know uh, uh, a trucks that area, which you can you know you could do very conveniently. He's got a seventy five foot. Um, uh, Refrigerated, refrigerated vessel that, that that is able to you know carry a, a a variety of produce and also fresh fish you know from from Long Island Sound over to here, so we started to do that and uh, as I said I like to see that be developed a little bit more where you can use the upper river the Wall Street area as as a depot center 
as I said, rather than bringing in trucks into that area. And okay. Then, that, that's a nice you, idea. You can use yeah. smaller trucks or smaller vessels or, or vehicles to uh, to uh, transport transport the produce into the shops and areas around there. So you know, busy the place up with uh, with uh, trucks, double parking, et cetera. For no, it's a, it's a cool idea and it's a nice vision. The other other is one of talking about the waterfront. I, I agree with that in 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 theory, um, but my concern is that you know what will it do to the Norwalk River and the people that use it you know, um, you know, um, recreationally, um, you know, I mean, I know I kayak up and down the river all the time and, you know, having to, you know, kind of, you know, be like fend off these huge boats that are going up and down um, would be a concern, plus the oyster beds and things like that. And I know the Harbor Commission, I know is very aware of all of that. Um, but you know, it's just it's something that we don't want to really you know disrupt. Um, and I love the idea of coming in, but anything rather than outside truck, the truck right? It's right. good, but you know you don't want to go you know from the frying pan to the fire. You know, it's like yeah. Well, it's the, these urban these urban waterfronts uh, always have kind of conflicted users and and kind of competing interests about the watershed and. And access, and I think that that's why a, a a plan will be useful in this case to kind of try to sort out and find a place for all of the different users you've been talking about. Um, uh, Tim, let me just also chime in with what Jody is talking about again. Uh, kayaking certainly would be uh, it's, it's certainly certainly a, a a need for for kayaking, but not in the upper harbor. Uh, do you kayak in the upper harbor? In the upper harbor, yeah, like. like out like by the Norwalk Island? No, 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 no. Or no. in the upper, upper river. Upper harbor, upper harbor, in the harbor, in the mouth, in the, up in the harbor, the Wall Street area. Yeah, we do. Um, we do, we do, have, as... we do have rowers up there. Uh, they mm -hmm. uh, and we tr well, we try to work with the Marine Police to educate the war rowers, particularly mm -hmm. in the area, because with the length of those oars and uh, the narrowness of the river up there, it's just not too condu conducive for uh, uh, for much of that that type of traffic and that usually is reserved for out outer towards Peach Island so so uh, uh, keeping keeping traffic up up in that area is certainly uh, uh, important to keep it down to a, a, raw, a minimum roar because we do have barges going up that area right you have divine brothers bringing bringing in sand and gravel uh, that as a matter of fact that was critical for Norwalk because uh, if we did not have that type of industrial zone, uh, for sand and gravel, then we would have been written off the, the federal navigation project, and therefore not eligible for funding to get dredging in Norwalk Harbor. So, so we were very sensitive. The, the commission was very sensitive in trying to maintain uh, uh, barge traffic up in that area. At one time, we were bringing oil in that area, but that that has stopped. And uh, it was certainly important for us to uh, maintain the sand and gravel up in that area. So uh, we have to coordinate that. And that, John, now, that, that makes you eligible for U.S. Army dredging, right? right? If you have industrial well, operations? Yes, uh, yeah. yes but uh, right now we're, we're actually, Connecticut is off the, much of the harbors in Connecticut, the small industrial, har uh, small harbors are off the Federal Navigation Project and only uh, Bridgeport, New Haven, and New London are on the Federal Navigation Project. We, on the other hand, would have to require special appropriation or uh, funding from the state in order to get to get to get dredged. Uh, we were last dredged about about seven years ago, and uh, we're going to probably need it again, maybe in about another maybe 10, 15 years, uh, as we begin to silt in, uh, particularly around in the in the various areas. But uh, we 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 need to keep our har harbors viable, keep them open, and dredging is a very important part mm -hmm. of our part of our charge, basically. Okay, okay great. great. Um, uh, Nick, George, George, Josh, any comments about the waterfront? I don't have anything specific about the, the waterfront. I am in agreement with everyone about the uh, improving the waterways, uh, limiting the, the amount of traffic on the streets, um, and also the, the beauty of the waterfront, preserving that. I guess the one point that I would want to make, if uh, new businesses are going to be coming in, are there going to be any standards for those businesses to be more eco-friendly or green? Uh, to be able to preserve uh, the waterfront, because certainly uh, the exit, the additional traffic up and down the waterways could potentially bring uh, more pollutants um, 
and, and noise and, and various other things. I just didn't know if there would be uh, or has been discussions of certain standards that uh, individuals would have to be uh, using the waterway. I think we could look at that with the waterfront plan, don't you think, John? Yeah, Tim, let me, let me, let me chime in on that one because we're in the process of trying to uh, uh, get um, uh, some amendments uh, put into place with regard to uh, building parking lots. We want, we, when parking lots are being placed in and around the water. Now we have, we, the Harbor Management Commission has jurisdiction on uh, and the coastal management area, which is a thousand feet from the harbor. So anything that goes, any building that goes on in the harbor has to be, be run by the Nauk Harbor Management uh, Commission for consistency with the Harbor Management Plan. And uh, as far as the plan is concerned, uh, we need to uh, uh, put into place uh, the uh, stormwater drainage, which we're very sensitive, uh, sensitive about because of the um, uh, water runoff from parking lots. And so what we'd like to see is uh, much of the impervious surfaces that were once put into place be limited mm -hmm. uh, in an in in, in area so that, uh, and then put into place some green areas that would be allowed for, uh, for water drainage in those areas prior to going in. And plus having uh, 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 either sump pumps or galleries to, uh, to, collect, to collect water runoff uh, for certain levels of storms prior to going into the harbor. So that's our recommendation that we do for all of the industries in the, in the, in the Nauk area that, that are close to the water. So uh, that, that's critical. So that, so that it's one thing to have a parking area, but we're going to require, hopefully require, that's going to be minimum amount of, uh, of a macadam and at least put into place some sort of grass or some place where water can flow into and, and probably filter out what is on top of, on top of that impervious surface. Excellent. And I, I, think, I think, John, we can work with your group through this waterfront plan to, to come up with well, some... We have, we, have a, we have in place a harbor management plan. I don't know if you've seen that. Uh, we already have that. It's a state. It's a state and city-approved harbor management plan. Okay. And that's basically our bible. That's what we use to uh, to assess and make recommendations. And we're the only agency or only commission in town that has some sort of let me put on quote unquote authority. I see. With regard to the walk bridge project, now we we review all of the applications that DOT is putting in, and uh, work very closely with DEP to make sure that because most and first and foremost, Nauk is a shellfish industry. It's a it's a a very viable shellfish industry, and we work very closely with the Nauk Shellfish Commission to make sure that any material that flows in and out of this harbor is is uh, uh, you know, uh, kept clean, basically. So we're okay. certainly, cons certainly concerned about not only heavy metals, but we're concerned about uh, uh, aromatic uh, hydrocarbons, mainly coming from the from the 95 bridge. Uh, oh, interesting. We made, we made a major, major breakthrough uh, with regard to uh, uh, having the DOT filter 85 percent of the water that comes off that bridge and to go through uh, 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 an access area prior to going to the harbor so that was a that was a major step forward as far as we're concerned because we did an analysis when we had the dredging done in Norwalk up around that area uh, a thousand feet before and a thousand feet aft of the bridge that was where highest contamination right right in the midpoint right there, there yeah. was in 95 so as a result of that the army corps uh, the army corps and the DEP required us to capture that material and bury it on our own. In other words, we had to we had to develop a CAD cell in that area. So we're very sensitive to the amount of effluent that comes off our roadways because we own it. Once it gets into the harbor, we right. to own it. And then it, it affects the shellfish. It affects, and... affects the shellfish. It also right. affects our ability to dredge. It, it drives the dredging cost up over a million dollars. I see. So I, I want to let everybody know that we're going to be pulled back into the main session very soon. But Nick, I think you got an excellent answer from John. Um, uh, Jody, yeah. Um, Nick's idea about like going green or, you know, I think that actually should go back to the previous topic we spoke about, that buildings, any buildings that are going to be built, whatever, um, you know, however they're classified should be, should have some sort of green energy, whether it's solar um, or, you know, anything. And, the, and these parking lots that you're talking about, they should have, you know, um, the, you know, the charging stations and things like that. I mean, we need to account for all of that. And I think if you're gonna, you know, I'm, I do see, you know, buildings going up and they're not, they're not, they're, they don't, you know, they don't have solar panels on them. Like if you built a new building, in the year 2021, why doesn't it have solar panels on it? 
like, why aren't you using that energy? You know, so that's, that is a, that's, I think that that should be a, a big part of that topic. Okay. Um, Excellent. And I, I, I think that, um, and I, I, you know, I, I know that some of that was in the, in the citywide plan, some of those very broad goals, but I, I think it's a good idea to kind of integrate it into um, uh, how we think about these industrial uses, especially if they're going to be in, in districts that also have residential and commercial uses too. I mean, be, be beyond that it's the right thing to do, um, it increases the compati compatibility of those uses with other uses. So I think it's a good point. Uh, George, have you, um, we, I guess we have to leave soon. Um, uh, in 54 seconds, George, do you have any fi final comments? I guess not. All right, well, it was a great conversation. Um, so uh, stay tuned on the waterfront plan. And I'm sure John will be meeting with you and your group. Um, I think Steve already yeah, talked to already, us yeah, about that. So me and we plan to put in a few uh, uh, underlying statements with regard to uh, maintaining Great. and preventing impervious services and, and catch off from rooftops and uh, okay. building okay. services and, and parking lot services Great. prior Great. to going to the harbor. That's critical right. as far as we're concerned. And, John, and, and, all that information. Yeah. I'm sorry, Jody. Thank you for all that information. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Yeah. And Jody, thanks for your comments. Um, uh, Nick's. Uh, thank you, George, for listening, and uh, let's all head back to the main space. <laughs>